Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make facial hair in Photoshop. Hey guys, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace, and you can find me on the all new Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And I'm excited about today's episode because I'm gonna show you how to make facial hair from scratch in Photoshop. And this is super useful. It's more useful than it sounds because um, if you're like me and you're a guy, um, there's probably some areas of your face that facial hair just doesn't grow. For me, there's a patch like right here that there's just no saving me. There's just, it's never gonna grow there. <laughs> Maybe I'll put Rogaine on my face if I ever wanna grow my beard long. But um, that happens and that pretty much happens to everyone. So if you're taking a picture of someone and they have like little blotchy areas on their beard or whatever it is, uh, this is a great way you can fill that in and make it look a lot better when you're retouching. Or if this is just something you wanna do for kind of like playing around time, if you wanna um, see what it would look like to give yourself a beard or a goatee or whatever it is. Or if you're a girl and you always wanted to know what you would look like with a mustache, you can use this technique for doing all of that. All right, let's get into today's episode. Cool, so here's our image for today. I believe it was titled, Incredibly Good Looking Latino Man. Um, it's from Fotolia.com, and uh, we're gonna be filling in some areas here on, on his beard. Uh, just like this area here, and uh, we might even give him some more hair, things like that down here. So a couple things to kind of look for when you're gonna be creating facial hair. Um, first thing is that it's not all the same color. We can see we've got some dark color over here, looks a little bit closer to black, um, looks a little closer to brown over here. We've even got some kind of like some lighter hairs growing over here. And then we're also gonna see, like in this area, you can see we have highlights on the hair as well. So even if we have black hairs, sometimes they'll hit the light and they'll kind of get a highlight on them. So we kind of need to add all that stuff into our brush when we actually go to create these things in Photoshop. We need to add all that variation in. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off. This is not gonna be that difficult and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. First thing I wanna do is I wanna create one single uh, hair basically on, on his face. So let's go ahead and on a new layer, I'm gonna paint with a brush tool. I'm gonna, let's right click here. I'm gonna bring my hardness up about 80% or so and uh, we'll bring our size down. You can also hold down, there we go. That's too big. You can use the open and close brackets as well to make your brush either larger or smaller. All right, and basically what I wanna do here is just create like one hair. That looks a little too thick. All right, something like that. I'm just kinda, I wanna get the perfect hair. That looks good. All right, so we, we've created the perfect hair. Now if I move, use my move tool, I can move it around and see like, does it actually fit? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now keep in mind if it's like, you know, if I put it down here and I need to blur it, I can always blur it after the fact that I put it down. So I've got one perfect facial hair right now. What are we gonna do with this? Well, I'm gonna make a new layer underneath this layer. So I'm gonna hold Control or Command and hit the new layer icon. That makes a new layer underneath your current layer. And let's grab our marquee tool. We're gonna use the uh, rectangle marquee. I'm just gonna make a white box around this, okay? And we're gonna hit Shift Delete there and I'm gonna fill this with white. There we go. So now this is what we have. Let's just go ahead and turn off our snapping. All right, so this is what we have. We have a, a white box and then within that we have our hair. That's important because we're gonna make this into a custom brush and whenever you do that, you wanna make sure you have a white background and that your brush is black. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Well, all we have to do is turn this area into a selection, which we could just grab another selection from our marquee tool, or I can hit Control or Command and click on this layer, which that will turn any layer into selection. So now we have a selection of this area. So we're ready to turn this into a brush. All right, all we have to do is go to Edit and then down here to Define Brush Preset. There we go. And we can see there's a little preview of it. It tells you the size, it's gonna be 46 pixels. And we're just gonna call this facial hair. All right, there we go. So let's deselect and then now we're gonna grab our brush tool, B for the brush tool, and it should automatically load up the last brush you just created. In this case, it's the facial hair brush. So let's create a new layer and see what's going on with this brush. So if I click a few times, we can see it, it creates my facial hair brush. If I click and drag, there we go. That's what our facial hair brush looks like. So that's how we create the shape of the brush. Next, we need to go into the brush preferences and really make it look like it's got the features of facial hair. So let's go ahead and delete all those layers. We don't need them anymore. We already have our brush. All right, on a new layer, and I'm gonna do this over here, we're gonna open up like a test environment. So right now, this is what the brush tool looks like. 
All right, if I go to Window and then down here to Brush, we're gonna get this great brush menu. Now, in this brush menu, we have a ton of options, and I would really recommend spending some time kind of playing around in the brush menu because there's so many great things you can do here. First things we're gonna do, I'm gonna click on our Shape Dynamics. We're gonna turn this on, and I'm gonna turn my size jitter all the way up. What this is gonna do is it's gonna make some of these larger and some of these smaller, okay? Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my angle jitter and we're gonna turn this up as well. So this is gonna make each one of these hairs is going to be at a different angle. Next, we're gonna turn our roundness jitter up as well and this is just gonna add even more variation to these hairs. Because you can see, each one of these hairs is not gonna be the exact same, right? Okay, looking good. So the next thing we wanna do, I wanna kinda scatter these around. Right now, like that hair doesn't actually grow like that, right? Let's turn our roundness jitter down a little bit. There we go. Hair doesn't actually grow like this, that, that's not realistic. So let's go ahead and turn on scattering and I'm gonna turn on both axes here. So that way as I bring my scattering up, you can see what happens is my hair just kind of scatters around. Very cool. And we can change how much scattering we'd actually like. All right, let's go ahead and bring this up just a little bit more. We're looking good. So if I click and drag this down, that's what it looks like. And if I go to the right, that's what it looks like there. Okay. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna go back to our Shape Dynamics and I'm gonna turn where it says Angle Jitter. I'm gonna control it, take this control and I'm gonna put it to Direction. The reason I'm gonna do that is now, as I paint down what you're gonna see, let me just move this over here, you can see that the hair actually goes in the direction that I'm painting. If I go in this way, it's gonna go in that direction. So basically, based on the direction of my brush, that's the way the hair is gonna go. Now, right now, it's going perpendicular to my movement, but if I go to my brush tip shape and I change this angle from zero to 90, what's gonna happen is it's gonna go with the movement of my brush. So I'm able to define which direction the facial hair actually travels in. It's kinda cool, you could totally like make someone's name out of this. So now you can see I've got a lot more control than when I started out, right? I'm actually creating hair that like follows a path. Obviously, you can see I'm having fun with this. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn on our transfer. So the reason we're doing this is because, let's go ahead and turn all this off. I wanna make some of these hairs more visible and some of these hair less visible. All right, some of these hairs. <laughs> let's turn our opacity jitter up and uh, what this is gonna do is basically just what we said. It's gonna make some of the hair more visible, some of the hair less visible. So it's just gonna look a little bit more realistic. Okay, and then, Almost done here. Bringing this down, I can also flip this hair around. So if I hit this X jitter, some of these hairs are gonna be going, you can see all these are curving the same way, right? They kind of have the same arc. Now, flipping this X jitter around, some of them are going to be curving one way and some of them are gonna be curving the other way. And if I wanted to do the Y jitter, I can do that too. Okay, now that's a lot of hair. If you want even more hair, bring your spacing down and what that's gonna do is just put a ton of hair right there. If you want less hair, bring your spacing up and that's gonna give you less hair, something that's a little bit more realistic. All right, so now it looks like we're pretty much ready to start creating this hair. So probably not good just yet, probably not perfect, but I think we're on our way. Okay, so now what we wanna do is start painting our hair. So on this layer, we're just gonna start painting in right where we want our facial hair to show up. And you can see it, should look pretty real. Now, you're gonna have color variation and things like that in the hair. So what I would recommend doing is, because this is a brush tool, you can paint with any color you want. I mean, if I wanted to create like bright pink hair on this guy, I could do that. See, it's a, just a regular brush tool now. All right, I don't wanna do that, but <laughs> it is an option for you. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is grabbing a brush tool and then sam sampling a couple colors, okay? sampling these colors from the existing hair that's already there. So you can see I've got like a dark brown right now. And this is just getting like some nice hair that's that dark brown color. All right, gives it a little bit more of that realistic look so we don't have just one color facial hair because that's not how facial hair grows. All right, let's see what we're doing over here. There we go. Paint some in over here. You know what, you can create new layers and you can use blending modes as well. Like a multiply blending mode is going to make sure that this hair makes everything darker. All right, you can make some of these brushes, you could go a little bit smaller with your brush or you can go larger with your brush too. Just don't go too large or you get something like that. 
There we go. And now let's choose our brush tool and grab another color that's a little bit darker this time. All right, and you can see I'm painting downward because we have control over where our brush goes. Remember, it's going to follow the direction of my actual brush, right? So I'm painting downward. If I paint left or the right, my brush is going to look like that. So if I want you know, the hair to look a little more realistic, I'm gonna actually like paint it in the direction that the hair should actually go. There we go. This is looking really good, actually. Not that I doubted that it would look good for a second, because I knew it would, um, but it looks good. There we go. All right, so you can see I'm just kind of like painting in this facial hair, wherever we want it. Now, if you wanted to paint in stubble, super easy. Just make your brush shape the size or the shape of stubble. So in this, we created the shape of our brush as one single hair. But if you wanted stubble, just make the brush shape look like stubble. All right, let's go ahead and group those layers and uh, let's take a look at the before and the after really quick. Pretty good. Now we talked earlier about adding some color variation as well as adding some highlights into what's going on here in the actual facial hair. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to open this group up, make a new layer in here, and then this time I'm just gonna paint with, let's just paint with white, why not? So I'm gonna paint with white and just paint a couple of these hairs visible here. And what this does, you can see here, it, you don't even notice it until I turn the layer on and off. It just adds like what looks like highlights on, on this hair. So it makes it look a lot more realistic, right? Rather than just having your dark hair. Or if you wanted someone to have gray hair, you just paint a lot of this in. It's like, oh, I'm getting old, my gray hair. All right, we won't do that. I'm having fun, obviously. Okay, so this is a great way to actually fill in facial hair. Now, let's say we wanted to actually make some facial hair that was, you know, a little bit more, um, we want to sculpt now. Let's go back to our brush tool and uh, I'm going to bring our spacing down. So we're going to put more hairs per inch, HPI, <laughs> in, into our brush. And uh, now we can start kind of sculpting this around. There we go. I made up HPI, by the way. You probably figured that out, but um, <laughs> just in case. I looked up HPI everywhere on the internet. I couldn't find any information about it. What's, what's the deal? All right. There we go. So I'm just kind of grabbing some colors from the actual beard itself. And here we're painting in some of the facial hair. So you're going to see it's not going to look real until we create a new layer above it. And then I paint with the highlight color over top of it. All right, let's just bring down our opacity a little bit. There we go. That looks good. You know what? I'm going to bring up my spacing just a little bit because I don't need so many of the highlights in there. And there we go. That looks, see how much more real that looks? Just giving it a little bit more of that definition there. And I'm gonna erase that guy right down there. Looked like it was going gray instead of highlights. So this is how we could use it basically for some interesting facial hair. Um, some topiary additions to the face. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our before and our after. All right, here's our before and our after. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make facial hair super cool and simple to do. And if you don't feel like actually making the brush yourself, what you can do is just head over to flurn.com to this episode page and download this exact brush that we made in this episode. So you can just download the brush, double click on it once you download, it'll automatically open up in Photoshop and you got a facial hair brush that you can use on any one of your photos. You're welcome. <laughs> Anyway, if you like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can receive free Photoshop and photography updates every single week. As well, if you have any questions about this episode or ideas for new episodes, please leave it in a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And share, share the Flurn, share the Flurn with your friends. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Thanks guys, I'll Flurn you later. I always thought Flurn should be pronounced in a foreign language, like Flurn. Flurn. I'm Flurnin. Pat, Pat Flurnigan. Good to meet ya. You got Flurn all over ya. What's that coming out of your nose, Flurn?